Yo, what is going on everybody? Welcome back to a brand new Destiny video. Today's video, we are actually going back into another episode of Destiny's Zero Predictions, as I do every Wednesday on this channel. So if you enjoy this video and want to see more, be sure to drop a like down below and subscribe if you're not already to catch more videos just like this one. So this will be the final Zerp prediction of year two. After this week, the Rise of Iron should be out on next Tuesday, September 20th. So hopefully this final week of Zerp brings you guys something you need, and hopefully you bring some pretty good inventory this week, as it will be the last one of year two. So without further ado, let's get right on into these predictions, and we're going to start this week out with the Warlock class. So last week, you guys got the Apotheosis Veil, and for some reason, Zerg has brought nothing but helmets for the past two weeks, so I'm really not expecting him to bring another helmet for the rest of year two. It's been six helmets in the past two weeks, and that is why this week, I think the Warlock class is going to be getting some gauntlets, the Claws of Awe and Kara. So these actually give you an additional melee charge, so you can run around with two melee charges. Now a lot of people kind of forget about this piece of gear, and it's actually really great, especially on the Stormcaller class. You guys all probably know how OP those melees are, and how the range on them is just absolutely ridiculous. But with these gauntlets, it's even better because you actually get two extended melee charges. And with the right build, you can have a bunch of melees just all ready to go at pretty much any moment in time. So these gauntlets are pretty damn great to wear on your Warlock. And a lot of people do forget about them because they're always rocking those impossible machines for that guaranteed landfall. But these gauntlets are pretty much just as good if you play it in the right way. So I would definitely pick these up and test them out for your Stormcaller class or really just any class on your Warlock. But they definitely do have a bit of an advantage on the Stormcaller class. So next up we've got the Titans. Now you guys have actually gotten five helmets in a row, which I don't even really understand how he's bringing so many helmets or what is going on with that. Now he might bring another helmet and just make it seven helmets in a row, which would be pretty insane, but for my prediction, I don't think he's going to bring another helmet. At least I really hope he doesn't. I don't know why he just keeps bringing so many helmets. And honestly, I would like to see some varied gear. I don't know what's going on with Zer lately and why he's been wanting to bring so many helmets. Now, last week, I predicted the Peregrine Greaves because I just didn't think he would ever bring like a six helmet in a row. And I could easily see him bringing Peregrine Greaves or those Mark 44 standicides, which actually just got a bit of a stealth nerf. Although for my official prediction, I do think he's going to bring some gauntlets. I'm hoping this week he brings the Immolation Fist. These are the gauntlets for the Sunbreaker class, and he's only really sold these a few times in all of the Taken King. It's been quite a while since he sold them as well, and it would be the perfect week for him to sell them, as it is the last week of the Taken King. Now for these gauntlets, you unlock the Sunbreaker subclass node Explosive Pyre for free, and enemies brought down by your hammer explode, chaining fiery solar damage to other enemies. So these are actually pretty cool gauntlets. They're mostly for PvE, but they do have some PvP application as well. But just the fact that he hasn't brought them in so long, and he's only brought them one or two times in all of the Taken King, I do believe this week he will be selling them for the final week of the Taken King, and I'm really hoping he brings those along. Now if you don't have them already, I'd probably pick them up just to have them and collect them. But if you don't run Sunbreaker at all, and you don't really see yourself ever using these gauntlets, then you probably shouldn't waste your strange coins on them. There's going to be a lot of stuff coming in the Rise of Iron, like Engrams, and possibly even new exotics that come from Zera next week. So you want to keep that in mind this week, and you possibly might want to save up some of your strange coins and your Moses Light as well, because you never know what Zera might bring next week for the Rise of Iron. Now finally, we do have the Hunters. Now you guys have actually gotten three helmets in a row. But I'm definitely thinking this week you guys are going to be getting a chest piece. I think this week you guys are going to be getting the Crest of the Alpha Loopy. Now this isn't going to have much use until the Trials of Stars comes back because it does increase your revive time. But if you've never used the chest piece out before or you don't have it yet, I would definitely pick it up because in the Rise of Iron, and just basically when Trials of Stars comes back, this is a very good chest piece to use and it can help you and your teammates out a lot, especially on these new maps that are going to be coming out for the Rise of Iron. A lot of people I'm sure will be going down a lot and will be needing revives more than normal just because you're going to be learning the maps and a lot of people aren't going to be used to playing with the Rise of Iron and this new weapon patch update. So this chest piece really could come in handy over the next couple weeks with the Trials of Osiris coming back on September 30th. So I would definitely pick this thing up guys. It's going to help you yeah, it's out and it's going to help your teammates out as well when you're trying to play Trials of Osiris. And it could be the difference between you guys going flawless and not going flawless in the long run. It's very rare that it comes down to that. But it has been the deciding factor in a couple of games for me in the past. So I definitely do always keep this thing on me just in case I need it. And I would definitely do the same if you don't have it yet. And finally, we have my personal favorite, the weapon. Now, this thing is pretty hard to predict, but I'm definitely hoping this week I get it right for the final week of the Taken King. Now, there is one weapon that he has only sold one time in all of this entire year. He sold the Hereafter back sometime around when the Taken King first launched, but he hasn't sold it since then. Now, I don't necessarily think he's going to sell it this week, but it definitely is possible because I don't know why, but he's only brought this thing one time. I know a lot of people are still missing it and would like to get it. But this time around, I do think he's going to be bringing a special weapon for sure. But because these weapons are so hard to predict, I'm going to actually give you guys three of my predictions. I think he's either going to sell the Plan C, the Hereafter, 
the Telesto. All three of the weapons are pretty damn good, and the ornaments for them look pretty sick as well, so you gotta keep that in mind as well when looking at these new weapons now, because the ornaments will be coming with Rats of Iron, which completely reskins the weapon and just makes things look a lot cooler. But because the weapon is so hard to predict, and it's the final week of the Taken King, I figured I would give you guys three predictions this week. I do think he's either going to sell Plan C, the Hereafter, or the Telesto. All great weapons, so if he sells any of those and you don't have them, definitely pick them up and just keep them in your vault if you don't have them. And we also do have these Legacy Engram, because this time around I think he's going to be selling the Legacy Primary Engram. Now, for you, those of you guys who may not know this, if he sells that Engram and you're still missing any primary weapons like the Mind Multi Tool, or a couple of the weapons from your one, you definitely want to pick that up and try to cash that in for some of those weapons. You could be missing out on getting the Midol or the Red Death, which are insanely good now after these patches. So if he sells that Legacy Primary Engram, guys, and you're missing any of those weapons that are in the kiosk, definitely be sure to pick those up so you can get the Year 2 version, and then possibly even ascend them once the Rise of Iron comes out. So that definitely wraps up my predictions here for this week, guys. Hopefully you get something you need, and remember to get those Legacy Engrams if you need them. It's always nice to check those out, and you can easily get a couple weapons you may be missing, without realizing it. So definitely remember about those Legacy Engrams, guys. Drop a like if you enjoyed this video, and I will see you guys next week for another episode. Peace.